my boss and friend, the Member of Parliament for the good people of the Ofuansi Ayiribi, Minister for Information, Kujo Opon Nkrumah. We recognize you, Minister. And on that note, I shall invite the man to welcome us and to explain our purpose of gathering. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister for Education, the Honorable Matthew Poku Prempe, we like to call him Napo. Uh, I know people wonder what is the correlation between Matthew and Opoku and Prempe and Napo. <laughs> Nana Poku, as we like to uh, refer to him. Honorable Deputy Minister, um, heads of agencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, on behalf of the Ministries of Information and Education, I want to welcome you to our third nation building update the nation building update is a platform designed by the ministry of information uh, to allow agencies departments and ministries to provide a detailed account on selected interventions and programs of the government of ghana when you check our constitution one of the four pillars is the combined pillar of probity and accountability and as this administration acts towards four years, it is a good time to account to the people and to update the nation on a number of things that are being done to help us build that country that we desire to uh, make great and strong. Tonight, the minister responsible for education is going to spend some time speaking to the theme, investing in education, investing in the future. There are a lot of interventions that have been rolled out in the education subsector. Interventions like the famous free senior high school program, which we very often speak about. There are teacher-related interventions. There are interventions for quality of education. But one subset of the interventions, which we haven't spent too much time talking about, but which I submit to you humbly is as significant as any other, is investment in education infrastructure and tonight the honorable minister is going to spend around some 30 45 minutes to outline the kind of infrastructural investments that the akufuado administration of the government of ghana has embarked on in the last three and a half years when he is done we will spend some 10 to 12 minutes to watch um, a little documentary or perhaps before he speaks we'll give you a preview a little documentary, and then when uh, we are done, the Honorable Minister will now do a full presentation. So on behalf of the two ministries, we want to welcome you once again. We thank our media partners who are carrying our activity live from now until 7 p.m., and we invite you to pay attention to the screens as we show you a little preview, and then the Honorable Minister will take the podium. So good evening and welcome once again. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister for Information, for those warm words of welcome. Yes, indeed, we are live on the nation's broadcaster, GTV, the station of the nation. We are also live on Oman FM, Asasi Radio, Asempa FM, Adum TV, Wound to Me TV, Joy News TV, GH1 Television, Metro TV, Net2 TV, MX24, E Ghana, Happy FM, and Atinka TV. We are grateful for your partnership, our colleagues in the industry. I shall now invite our head of production, please, production, let us go through the documentary that preview to the minister's presentation. The first creative arts. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for that precursor. This is what you call, this is what you call a teaser, and a teaser it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pay rapt attention 
to the gentleman who is going to take the podium because it's about updating the nation on the status of edu investing in education and investing in the future. Honorable Minister responsible for education, Matthew Opoku Prempe, Nana Napu. Huh? That is why history is part of the curriculum again. It's not me. It's somebody from your hometown. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this to this evening, discussing one aspect of investing in education, that is infrastructure, from the basic schools through the tertiary, technical, and vocational. I hope my presentation will be short. If we could start. Between 2017 and 2020. This is going to be the outline. In basic education, we have KGs, primary and junior high schools, then secondary education, then TVET and tertiary. Then others, which don't directly fall under these three groups. Next. In the basic education sector, across the 16 regions, We've initiated 719 projects. And these projects vary from two classroom kindergartens to 18 unit classroom block, depending upon the need of that particular uh, institution. Also, when we build these schools, years we have completed 252 of these projects out of the 719 across the 60 regions of the country. Next. So when you take the two unit classroom block, we've initiated 193 of them. Uh, there is two units and we've completed 386 units, that is times two. The capacity per classroom is 42. So the total number of seats that we have developed in the KG sector, proposed in the 719 schools or classroom blocks, is 16,212. Out of that, we have fully completed 95 blocks, actually creating 7,980 seats in the KG sector. Six unit classroom blocks, we created 25,200 seats. At three unit classroom blocks, we've completed 2,880 seats. A total of 216, the total number of seats we've created is 34,460, increasing physical access. The toilet blocks, the rehabilitation works, and the others would continue. Next. So these are some of the buildings. Kokufu, the KG block. Nyakrum uh, Holy Korambi, English Yaman from DA, a 4 kg classroom unit. So we do have, and when you track us on our website, we do have the digital address of the school, and the address and the longitude and the latitude, so that people don't say these are phantom projects. You can just log in and go precisely to locate the structure. Next. So these are some of the projects in the pictures and different schools are said. Can we roll on? Same primary schools, the different units, SDA primary. The six unit primary blocks, we've completed 105. Uh, this is St. Uh, Joseph's Basic School. This is our uh, MA primary. Next. The three unit junior high school. For the junior high school, we might do three units or six units or 12 units or 18. This is in NNM, and this is about four in the official North constituency. This is NNM in the Tiwa East constituency. 
And we've done 24 of such blocks. Next. Then in the area of secondary education, in 20, between when we started free SHS in 2017 and 2018, the next academic year, we did the analysis and found out that we needed accommodation seats for 181,993 students. Because we're expecting 472,000 students to go to school, but the available seats for them to sit on were about 290. That is what led to the double track. The number of seats that were available in all our secondary schools and the number of students that were going to or we ever said were coming to first year at that time because the free SHL had been so successful, there was a need to fill or to build 181,993 classroom blocks. We couldn't build that within a year and the children could not stay at home. Whose child should stay at home and who should go? That is the famous vice president saying, and that is the reason. So that meant that overnight, we had increased access by 31%. The people who went in 2017, 2018, and those who were going to 2018, 2019. And across the country, we launched one of the five pillars of the free senior high school was infrastructure development. From day one, we knew that because we are going to open up, people will be attending school even the more. So we developed 1,011 structures around the country for where there's the largest need to where there was the least across the length and breadth of the country. Next. So the five pillars of the free senior high school was access, equity, quality, technical and vocational education and training, and infrastructure development. In the secondary field, the GET Fund has initiated 843 projects. The SEEP, or the Secondary Education Infrastructure Project, or additional funding we came to negotiate, we're doing 135 projects, which we have completed 107. 843, we have completed 382. And the Kuwaiti Fund, with 33 projects, we just started it, and we have completed three. So out of the 1,011 projects initiated, 492 have been completed, and more are in different stages of completion. Next, please. And in that secondary sphere, we do have three unit classroom, six unit, eight unit, 12 unit, and 18 unit. Simply put, we send assessors to the schools to find the population of the school and the number of students that will not get access or seats so that we construct. We don't just go and put 18 unit classroom block in every school. There are schools that the kids want to go to. In Ghana, since independence, we have what we call choice in choosing secondary schools. You don't force a child to go to a school in his or her neighborhood. The child decides, but I'm in Nampanduri and I want to go to Wesley Girls. Provided the child has got talent, that child should be able to go to that school. We don't restrict where children go to school. So obviously, our grade A schools are oversubscribed. And our grade C and D schools are undersubscribed. As we speak, there are about 400, nearly 400 schools that are single track and about 300 and something schools that are double track. So it's not every school that is having the double track uh, school system. So we have three units, six units, eight units, 12 units, and 18 units. And the number of seats that we have actually created out of the potential number of seats that we want to create, we've created 84,600 seats in this period where we started in 2018, 2019 academic year. When you look at the fifth column, when you add the total number of seats when we finish the 1,100, it will be 27,000 plus 311, which is 338, plus another 3,200, 386, going to another 12 unit classroom, 118,000, and 145,000. We will be creating more seats than all the kids that will go to those schools. Now, the problem will still exist. In the oversubscribed schools, they are going to continue to be oversubscribed. That is why the government has a policy that I will show you called the model secondary schools. Next slide. So, apart from the classroom blocks, in Ghana, when we talk about secondary education, 
we talk about a boarding education. And, and, and since we started this free SHS, people will come and tell you that, yes, my child will go to school because my, I live at Anumle. I didn't know that there was a village called Anumle. This is a walking distance to Achibata School. So my child will go there. So the child on merit gets Achibata because he has chosen Achibata as a day school. The day the child gets admission, the mother and father are transferred from Anumle uh, to Kwajakru, meaning you have to find a way of translating that day student to become a boarding student. We do get such stories, but it is because nobody wants a bad school for that child. Everybody aspires that his or her child will go to a good school. So apart from the classroom block, we're also creating dormitory blocks. And we've done single-story dormitory, double-story, two-story, and three-story. And the number of beds that for our completed uh, dormitories that we have created is an additional 20,340 beds in those facilities. It's instructive that we have built separate toilets in these schools, 14,832. It will surprise you that there were secondary schools, though a few number, about 20 or so, that had no water and toilets. So I just wondered how the ladies especially cooked in those schools. Next slide. And we have a program to put toilets and water in at least every secondary school and the basic school. So these are pictorial uh, diagrams of some of the pictures of some of the schools. This one is the Infanseman girl, Infanseman girls of Oripeni Senior High School, and uh, that is in Kumasi Senior High School. Kumasi Senior High Technical School is a school those of us who grew up and lived uh, all our lives in Kumasi didn't know that it even existed. Only to become a Minister of Education to find out that in the whole country, Ghana, is probably the one, number one choice school for the whole country. It is not an A school for starters, but it is conveniently located in the middle of Kumasi that the access is not a problem for the kids, and they love it. We are building, the school has no space again to contain what we are building there. Next slide. I've already talked about the number of classroom blocks and the seats we have created. Next slide. That is Anglican Secondary School. And I'll use Anglican as an example of one of the schools we are doing. Next slide. Next slide. This is Kumbubu Senior High School, uh, Sogakope Senior High School. All across the length and breadth of the country, the buildings are continuous, not only in Accra or Kumasi. All the length and breadth of the country. Also, to Senior High School, Teche Senior High School, uh -huh. no, Teshi, Teshi Senior High School. Uh, to move senior high technical school. Next slide. The li we are doing libraries for schools that are being encumbered. The land is being encumbered. There's a national policy that we build fences around the school. So the famous Achimota School, we have been able to build a fence around Achimota School to prevent people from encroaching. We are also doing administrative blocks in some of the schools. Next. Then we move to the third phase of the senior high schools, which we call the model schools. The model schools are new schools that we intend constructing. We intend following what President Kofor started called model schools. And those model schools were only called model schools because they were not grade A schools. They were schools that people felt that in every district in Ghana, we should build an Achimota or, of course, prepare college in that district. That was the whole point. If you get a prepare in your district, you are just fine. Uh, everything will work out. So these were core model schools, and I think 35 of such schools, or 53 or 35, were built under President Kofor. When um, the next government of President Kofor came, they, they stopped building those model schools and started developing their form of model schools, which is called the e block And a lot of controversy has come around the e block so I'll explain the difference. In the President Kofor era, the Model school was in every district, choose a secondary school in that district, and upgrade the facilities such that people would want to go to those schools. I'll use my school so that nobody thinks that uh, I'll use Anglican secondary school. When we were in secondary, going to secondary school, uh, and I lived in Kumasi, like, just like Kumasi secondary, secondary technical school, nobody chose it. Hardly did anybody choose to go to Anglican secondary school. 
because we felt that it was a rundown school and nobody wanted to go there. Uh, now, Agricultural Secondary School, after being made a model school under President Kofo, is one of, the, one of the number one choice schools in the country. And it's not only Anglican, Chebu, Odogono, Was, Drobo, all around the country, uh, all around the country where the model schools were built, the number of students who wanted, because of physical beauty and serene environment that was created, the number of kids swelled up and the teachers' accommodation that was done. And that is what we are doing under Nana Dodanko Ekufuado. And that is the plan to build another 35 of such model schools. We've started and piloted the first nine. And the first nine, two of them are upgrading schools that exist that nobody wants to go, like Diaso in Central Region and Kwasi in uh, Bono East uh, Region in Wenchi. And the others are brand new schools in areas that are being underserved chronically by lack of secondary schools. And we have seven of that. We also came to meet a policy from NDC that said, if God blesses you and you become a president of this country, your hometown should be blessed with a secondary school. So we all know JEA Mills E Block. And we know JDM in Bole Bamboy. And we are developing a JAK in Daba, in Achuma, in Wabeja constituency. So those two seven blocks, we are also doing the first creative art school in this country at the secondary level, where there will be special emphasis of the creative arts. We do science, science, science. But actually, if Assassini is a technical guy, right, in musicology, had about 82 compositions, right? The president has willfully named the whole technical university after Ephraim Amun, so that we all remind ourselves what a man he was. We are building the first creative art school for, 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 for dance, for music, for everything, so that kids who are talented or who want to improve their music skills and dance skills and oratory skills <laughs> can go to that school. There's one technical vocational school we are doing, it will be a girls' technical vocational school in President Kofor's hometown, Pion School. And I'll show you. And we have five science based schools in federals of our STEM agenda. Then there are two schools. In the facilities, and I'll come there, the facilities in those schools include administration block, a creative arts science block, the dormitory blocks, dining hall with kitchen, staff accommodation, library block, recreational facilities a sports field, a running track, laboratories, road and external works, service and maintenance shed. Next, please. So these are the ones. We have one in Takwa in CIM, the Western region. Somebody wants to blind me. In Ashanti region, we have the first creative art school in Kwadaso. We have the Achua Weja, J.A. Kofor, Senior Girls, it's for Girls, Senior High Technical School. Uh, they are all at various stages of construction, just less than a year. As should have for construction of Senior High School at Akrodie. When Chief Municipal, upgrade of Kwasi Senior High Technical School. Upper Denture West, they are some community Senior High School. Etiwa, construction of uh, Senior High School in the current president's hometown of, of Abobusu. Greater Accra and South, construction of senior high school in Wija, Northeast, West Wampusi, construction of senior high school in Pasipe, and then Takwa in Suyayo, construction of a senior high school at Awasu, at the various stages of completion. Next. And this is what we have in our senior high school in Abobosu. So that is the administration block in the middle. Uh, that is the teacher. normal classes and 12 for laboratories. Then we have a dining hall and an assembly hall and a library. All purpose head 
teacher's bungalow and our assistant head teacher's bungalow and a playing field, a soccer field. I don't know whether it will be AstroTurf, depending on Pius or what we want. Next. So in Kwasi, which is an upgrade, this is the teacher's bungalows or flats that we have put up there. So, and that is the dormitory, that is the classroom block going up, that is the assembly hall. And the next. In Awaso, you are seeing versions of the same building going on. That is Awaso in the western region. Next. And that is the community senior high school. The, next. These are the facilities. Okay, let me finish. I'll get there. So, in secondary, in the area of the secondary schools, for the community senior high school project, again, the secondary education in province, the World Bank project, day 23, or started 23. By the end of December 2016, out of the 23, only seven had been completed. When I say completed, ready for students to go in. Between 2017 and 2019, we have completed 14 more. So when you hear... <laughs> when you hear a statement like, we started a project, it was not continued, the truth, there's no truth in it. Unlike President Kofor signing for WA Regional Hospital to be complete with full money in December 2018, the only time the building started was when Anado Danko Kufuado came back. Government of Ghana, and I want us to do it, Government of Ghana in phase one of the E Block project, and they signed 124 contracts. In phase one of the E Block, started 50. And the first 50 they started, by the end of 2016, they had finished only 22. 22. In 2017 to 2019, we finished five more to make it 27. In phase two of those projects, they started 51. None was complete. We've done nine more. So the total, just, just about a month ago in this hall, when the vice president did the accounting, it was 29.27. Now, it's 29.28, and by December, it will be 29.29, because the buildings are still ongoing. <laughs> Next. And that is the E-block. Single block, yellow crumble, a pesua, and they left it like that. The Ghana government buildings they were doing did not add anything to it. The World Bank buildings added some teacher bungalows and some other amenities. And please note, they were all supposed to be day schools. So the model schools under NDC for eight years were model day schools because they were not interested in boarding. So you got that. And when you imagine you put a day school, when the president visited Drummond, so I happened to be part of the team, the president's entourage could not go and visit the Drummond, so day schools because the road was so bad. So you can just imagine, it's a day school. And the president's entourage could not go because the road was so bad. So I don't know how many kids would be able to even walk to that school. So in all those schools that were built even under NDC, that kids were not patronizing because kids exercise choice. This government is adding dormitories to those blocks to make it usable. <laughs> Next. So that is the community senior high school, and that is the model senior high school under His Excellency Nanado Dr. Asifa. Next. Next. So that is the E block. Let's go a bit high. That is the famous E block, and that is the famous model schools that are going on under His Excellency. And you can compare the facility per facility. 14 story, four, one four story, 24 classroom block against two-story 24-unit classroom blocks. They are all four stories, and they all have 24, but we do two. That is the V blocks in the middle. We do two of them, giving the school 48. 
12 for collaborative, 36 for classroom blocks. There was one library room, one room in this block for library. We built a whole library block in our building. So, but, talk about bungalow, a bungalow with boys' quarters, three bedroom headmaster's bungalow with boys' quarters. We do a principal's residence and two vice principal residence and two staff flats of six each. The, the truth of the matter is, headmasters don't teach. Headmasters don't teach. So if you build a school and you only build a headmaster's bungalow, where will the teachers who actually teach stay? So we do two star flats blocks, six units each in it, so 12, plus the headmaster and two assistant headmasters. And then there's a sports area, there's a maintenance shed, much more compared to these two facilities. Next block, next please. So we try and provide a description in the E block and the new models. I will not attempt to read because I know somebody wants to blind me. But next. Then GMPC, in order for all Ghanaians to feel the impact of our oil fine, also decided to support that laudable project. Everybody working in GIC had to go to a school, a secondary school or a basic school. So other corporate responsible companies should emulate GMPC. It also, because when you build a school, the products will come and work for you. It's in their self-interest that Ghanaians are better educated and skilled to come and work for you. So more people should join hands with government in providing more facilities, whether it's toilet blocks, whether it's water uh, closets or it's boreholes, for our secondary school. GMPC alone have put up 159 projects nationwide, and they deserve tons of <laughs> They have completed 48 six unit classroom blocks, GMPC. 48. They have and in progress, they have 64. So, in the total, six units, four units, three units they have a total of 140 projects going on. In both senior high schools, 58, junior high schools, and basic schools across all our three levels uh, of education. Next slide. So these are some of the, if you can hurry this part, these are some of the GMPC uh, projects all around the country. Then we have a promotion of STEM in basic schools. We have two projects. STEM centers, when kids can go there weekend and have fun with coding, with uh, Lego, with building electronics, everything. We are building 20 of such STEM centers at various levels of the country. The STEM centers are put in senior high schools, but they are for basic schools, especially junior high schools. So they are not for one particular school. The community, all the schools can schedule times and go there and go and have fun with whatever you want to. Uh, we'll go to one site very soon. Next. So they are across all the 60 regions of the country. So this is how the STEM center will look like. And this is the construction of the STEM center and the pieces at various stages of construction. We are doing 20. The larger regions are having more than one, like Greater Accra, like Eastern region, like Ashanti region. We'll have, I think, two or three each. Then the third, fourth pillar of the senior high school project was our TVET. The TVET is something we haven't talked about, and we are talking about, we started talking about the TVET, and thanks to leadership with the various ministries and my deputy minister. The largest investment ever since the country called Ghana was constructed. Ghana was constructed from different pieces. Ghana was constructed, has been under the Nadu Danko and Pufuadu. Over $800 million. Over $800 million invested and committed for the only infrastructure and equipment and capacity building of the teachers and the new curriculum called competency based curriculum. Over $800 million. In different projects, 
One of the projects is being handled by a Chinese, Ghana government, a China government project, upgrading all the technical universities. You know, we've built, we've transferred or transformed overnight polytechnics into technical universities. To make it real technical universities, every polytechnic or technical university was asked to identify a niche area. So some want to do energy, some want to do computing, some want to do different things. Everyone was asked to choose something. And the project called Amatrol under NCTE equipped all the technical schools and the polytechnics in their area of niche, the area they have decided. Then Ghana government went for this other project to further build equipment and capacity in the same technical universities. So almost all the technical universities. In the Chinese project, 13 of our technical institutes, we have only 47 technical institutes in the country, 13 of them are also undergoing refurbishment. Teba Technical, Ashamai, Kumboni, Cape Coast, Kumase, Boko, St. Joseph Technical, St. Paul's Technical, Bogatanga Technical, Takradi Technical, Sunyani Methodist Technical, Dakuba Technical Institute, and Aswansi, which is probably our first technical institute in the country. All undergoing, all committed to be rehabilitated because we believe that the technical and vocational education and training, if we understand what it is, is that sustains the development of a nation. So that is why the government is doing only for technical institutes. When you come to the technical universities, I said all of them, all the 10 of them, upgrade under AVIC. So Bolikatanga, the space, they are improving the mechanical engineering, electronic and electrical, welding engineering, automotive repair, civil engineering, diesel generators. I standby generator. This is just putting standby generator there. But all the technical universities are being equipped, or buildings plus equipment are happening there under His Excellency Nanado Danko Ekupado. And that project alone costs over $126 million. So that is the first thing. Thank you. And also, in that project, we are building a center of excellence for technical examination in the country. In our only university for technical education, training teachers in technical education, we have one dedicated university made up of Kumasi College of, Mampong College of Agriculture and Kumasi College of Technology. The two have been added, a law has been passed to make them a TVET teacher training university. So when you come to the upgrade of the technical institutes, you think in that same area, mechanical engineering, electric, welding, automotive repair, civil engineering, and we have all our technical institutes as we listed and what is happening. Next, please. Then we have the overall upgrading and modernization of, again, another part of our vocational education and training, called the NVTIs, the National Vocational Technical Training Institute. There are 34 of them, 34, with five apprentices workshops across the country, with some OICs, and who knows their headquarters? It's on the famous new cemetery. When I pass there, I don't watch it. It's legal. I don't like cemeteries and mortuaries, so I don't... But after the cemetery is on the left, that one is on the, it's on the right. I prefer to watch the one on the right because that is an opportunity industrialization center and that is the headquarters of the National Vocational Training Institute. That headquarters was truncated in 74. The building was not complete. Under His Excellency Nanadu Nanko Kufuado, a loan of 126 million again has been procured. And this procurement is upgrading and updating and uh, uh, improving the infrastructure of all the 34, not one or two, all the 34 national vocational training. <laughs> and, it, and it consists of laboratories, workshops, classrooms, hostels, administrative offices, in all the, including transport for all the 34. Then we are refurbishing if you pass there, even on the motorway, you can see it. You are refurbishing the headquarters of the NVTI office and putting up 10 regional offices, putting up 10 regional offices and five apprenticeships 
uh, offices under the loan package. And that was not the end of that loan package. When you train people in technical and vocational, uh, you should start to build things. And we are doing two foundries, one in Accra, one in Kumase, and two machine tools making industry so that we can start developing things and not importing bolts and nuts. <laughs> and that hasn't ended on another project. On another project, I said, we are upgrading the OIC head office as well in Accra. Next. So, for the various institutions of the National Vocational Tech Trading Institute, there are different points of uh, completion. Next. Next. Then, go up. Next. Then, we have another project funded by the Austrian government for the Technical Institute. I already talked about AVIC doing 13. This project by VAS, this is the second phase. In the first phase, they take it in small bites. In the first phase, they did four technical institutes. In the second phase, they are doing another four institutes. And in the third phase, which we have contracted them, they are doing about six uh, institutes. So that we hope that all our technical institutes, all our national vocational training institutes, all our technical universities, and polytechnics, if they do exist, would have the most modern equipment, the best training for the teachers there, and the curriculum based upon competency-based training, so that Ghana becomes a country when there's oil, it was Ghanaians that will be oil, working in the oil industries, not Malaysians and Singaporeans. So Sacred Heart is rehabilitating the computer and catering workshop. St. Joseph's Technical Institute is doing a rehabilitation of a computer laboratory, welding workshop, basic mechanics. So all of them have a, have a, it's having electrical workshop, electronic workshop, computer workshop, machining workshop. So every part of this country in the technical and vocational space is being developed simultaneously. None is waiting for the other. Everything is going on. Next. That is the phase three of the VASI, in the sixth institution. Don Bosco in Sunyane, Cape Coast, Dagbon State Senior High Technical School in Yendi, St. George Catholic Senior High School in Kuntinasi, Eastern Region, Ghana Senior High Technical School in the Takrade, Western Region, Kibi Senior High Technical School in Eastern Region. So there's a plan for every technical institute. And to top that, the law is in Parliament to create a technical vocational education training and service as a standalone unit apart from the Ghana Education Service to give more emphasis in our technical and vocational education and service. <clears throat> then, the state of the art. This is the state of the art technical school. All I spoke about was upgrading, updating, upscaling, retooling, refurbishing, Re-equipment. That is a re, 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 re. But the real game is what is being shown here. We are building 32 state of the art technical institutes. As for that one, it's different too. 32 straight. <laughs> 32 straight. It's 32. All of them will be built. All of them. Parliament has passed the master facility agreement, and that is 478 million. So when you add 478 plus 226, that is the investment. His Excellency Nanadu Dankwe Kufadu, in less than four years, have done in. And it is not magic why it is 16. Every region will get two. And there are two types, a grade A and a grade B. Uh, the only difference is the number of traits or professions that is happening. In the 10, it is 10 different traits and professions. In the 6, it is 6 different traits and professions. And we have one center of excellence for teacher training and updating. That is being added to the university, Apia Menka, Apia Akintin Mensa, University of Skill Training and Entrepreneurial Development. 
That is the center of excellence that is being added. And that will offer 26 courses with an intake capacity of 780 per year. It is only for the technical and vocational teachers to upgrade their knowledge. We hope, we hope to put it in the middle of Kumasi, if you knew where Asim is. Asim is. It's between KTI, Anglican Secondary School, and Kumasi Technical University for the training of teachers. Next, please. So we have, we, we're doing it in every region we'll have, we'll have, we'll have to. Ashanti region, uh, Eastern region, Upper West, Tolibri, uh, Bodo East, uh, Oti, Western North. The first phase law has been passed. We hope that by the time Parliament rises this time, the second phase would also be passed. Next. And then when you take that as well out, there's a fifth one we are doing in the technical and vocational centers, which we call the district technical and vocational center. Every district has probably a God-given talent or God-given economic something. So whether it is oranges or it is tomatoes for Akumadan, or it is cassava, or it is plantain. And all these stuff that we have are all exportable and can be commercialized. You don't need to build big factories to do that. You can even semi-process for larger factories elsewhere. And that is why we came up with this district TVET centers. These district TVET centers are very, very small. It's just one big building that we have divided. That the district will tell us what skills they need are lacking in the district that we have to do. Of course, everyone will have a computer ICT training facility, all of them. But the rest, when you go to the one that will be happening in Pechi number two, we are going to learn jewelry making there. Because it's a talent that we have lost. <laughs> right? When you go somewhere else, they'll do maybe baby bakery, how to bake. And if you don't know how much money is in the bakery, you go to a party lately and you'll see how the, the ladies celebrate cake. They use cake for every design possible. I never knew cake can be even, okay. <laughs> no, my face clashed with somebody who is particularly well versed, so I had to quickly turn. And, and in all the places that they are doing ICT, they'll be doing coding and programming. Just not computer, but, uh, uh, no, no. They would also be doing coding and programming. So you can imagine when, if this project takes off big time, we are in the pilot phase. Now we have a deal for five of them. In Enginem, in Pechi, in Abore, in Akomadan, in Arisa, in all those places. We have five going uh, as a test, a proof of concept that every district needs to have a center for training where whether it's in the evening or it's in the weekend, people can go and get trained with a skill. The hand, the heart, and the, and the heart, and, 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 the, and the brain that we need to train. <laughs> Next slide. And, and, and the, uh, the, the icing is our tertiary education. We don't have enough people going through tertiary education. So what is government doing both about access uh, and, and physical buildings? Uh, this country, since independence, has never had a tertiary education policy. And we have a tertiary education policy. <laughs> not only that, not only that, it's not all of us that can physically travel and go to school. So Andanana Kufuado, cabinet has approved Open University Ghana, where distance education, quality distance education can happen. And we recently heard, we recently heard the Vice President in lunch in the manifesto and thereafter, we heard the famous story of thank you, your service to the country, uh, a student's loan trust fund where students will get loaned based upon a national ID card, right? So you don't need guarantor. I remember when I went for my loan, it came, it started with us. And um, I went to my father, I said, I need slate guarantors. I said, Cocoa farmers don't have slate numbers. Though. And chiefs don't have slate numbers. In any case, I didn't tell you that I can't look after you. So I'm not bothered about, I had to go and fish for three people. So I traveled, 
abroad when one of them called me. Hey, I've got it to pension you. They said don't give it to me unless you come and pay the student's loan. That time it was easy. We had just started. And when you think that two people, one person cannot guarantee more than two, how many state workers should we have to guarantee the burgeoning number of tertiary students? That is why we have to clap for students' loan trust fund when they come out with a policy that says. So when you have a combination of open university, and you have a combination of open university, uh, students' loan that depends upon yourself because you have a national ID card. And the third policy that the Deku Fado government has done, no tertiary student pays utility bills. No tertiary... Hey, listen to carefully. This, this tertiary university student is paying utility bills. It didn't exist too. It started at a dundum, a dundum, where they needed more support. We got students with tertiary education bill. It's a fact. It started in 2013. When the Dundum was there, and we wanted free electricity, somebody came with the fact that Upesoko University of Kaniaka, right? Now, the policy of government is that from the incoming academic year, no university or tertiary institution should charge or levy a tertiary student utility bill. So, we are talking about access. Access is making things simpler for people to access, right? So, I'm listing them. We didn't, we didn't stop there. We haven't come to the fiscal structures, because that is the last. We didn't stop there. What else did we do? We've done OP University. We've done uh, 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 no guarantor, or no guarantee, or no guarantor. We've done open university. And what else have we done? No utility. Right? Uh -huh. And then we are building the university. When you hear an NDC person says that you came and you didn't continue the project, point to him or her, Somenia University. When we came, it was only a loan. Actually, the South Koreans are threatening to take back their money. Because the people who were indicated they wanted to build Sumenya for us were the South Koreans. And just at the tail end of the exit of President Mahama, they went to contract a loan from the Italians, a commercial loan, instead of a concessionary loan, the South Koreans, because they had no patience. So the government could have just as well decided that they would wait for the South Korean loan, because that was concessionary funding. But no. It is because the government or the president thinks about the future, not the politics. He constructed the Somenia University, the purposely built university. That will also start, we are talking about access, that will also start admission from the next academic year. It didn't stop there. It also contracted a loan to do a phase two of Somenia to make Somenia, Somenia University a 100% university built. Probably Probably the only 100% purposely built university in Ghana We contracted loans to do that. University of UHAS is being supported by the Chinese for their phase one and their phase two. So that is also happening. 13 lecture halls, 250 multi-seater functioning halls, laboratories, faculties, all in Somalia. Look at the building. And we are going to do phase two. Next slide. These are all happening in KNUSD, of course. Uh, university, they don't want to take. <laughs> next. 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 Oh, why KNUSD plenty like that? Oh, still KNUSD. Oh, my God. All, all, all happening. They are increasing student intake by about 15,000 students. Then this is Takrade Technical University, a student hostel, SRC complex. Next, Kumasi Technical University, projects that are happening there. Next, Accra Technical University, projects that are happening there. <laughs> up, up. This electronic workshop is part of some of the loans that the AVIC and Amatron are doing. The UHAS, 
with the Chinese support, it's going up gradually. You have projects. You have projects. UMAT, University of Mines and Technology, two-story petroleum studies block. My famous GIG. We hope that in the next few weeks, GIG will be moved from where it is to a multi-purpose development just on the bottom. <laughs> next. Next. Oh, actually with GIG. Oh. Sudan Technical University. These are projects that are going on. Next. These are some of the equipment we are putting. State of the art, comparable to what exists everywhere in the world. Next, we've talked about that. This is the College of Technology that has become the main campus of the Apia Akinti Mensa University of Skill Training and Entrepreneurial Development. Hey, listen to the name University of Skills Training and Entrepreneurial Development. We won't train you in the skills and let you go. We will imbibe in you the ability to survive in the harsh environment <laughs> that we are in. So, oh, why? GIG at Nasusa, we buy our. So, we have model cars for people to learn hands-on. The whole thing about technical vocational education and training is about hands-on experience. Next. College of Technology. Modern equipment. Next. Borgatanga Borga, Technical University. Next. Wa Technical University. Next. Wa, yeah. Go on, what? Well, University of Education, Winneba. College of Technology, that is again in Kumasi, the, one, the same one, different part. Next. That is a technical examination unit for all our technical programs in the country. So that if your school, you are doing mechanical engineering and there's no facility for examination, you can transport you there to have state of the art equipment, hands on for you to be tested whether it's really, really true. I tested somebody who got first class in computing. I gave him my laptop, open it and go and assess me and file in Microsoft Word. Uh, that ended the day. But, <laughs> but, but thank you under his leadership. But now the doctor is That is what we are doing. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a big round of applause. And I think that the government of His Excellency Nana Dodankwe Kufuado and the ministry under the leadership of the hardworking Matthew Opoku Prempe deserves a standing ovation, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes, this is what you call performance. This is what you call competence. This is what you call delivery. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please resume your seats. And you are not alone, sir. I am also not a believer in one zongo, one mortuary. You are not alone. And the other day, an Islamic cleric was actually telling me that it is haram, it is abomination. And we are talking about one district, one TVET, one region, two technical institutions. Our colleagues are still in a comfortable lead with one zongo, one mortuary. Huh? Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I think that we need to catch some breath. We need to digest the information that we have been given. I shall invite Seprewa Agro to just give us five minutes as we internalize the information. Seprewa Agro, please let's show love to Seprewa Agro as they give us two minutes interlude. Before Seprewa, I... Honorable Deputy Minister, I apologizing to you for the rude interruption. 
Um, Honorable Minister, as you did your presentation, and as we followed the social media feed, there were about two issues that kept coming up. So as Seprawa prepares, I want to raise those issues and invite you to speak to them. I know you are done, but I think it's very important that you speak to those issues. The first has to do with how a country that is supposedly poor, like ours, is able to find resources to do this, I dare say, billions of Ghana cities worth of investment in education infrastructure from basic through senior high school to tertiary technical colleges, etc. So where are we getting the money from? Because if we are ostensibly as broke as we have always been told we are, how come we are finding money to do all? Where is the money coming from? That's one. Number two. So what is it that is being done by this administration, especially under your leadership in this sector, to ensure that all of these things can be sustained? These machines won't just, like we always see, get broken in the next six months. These buildings, chairs, tables will not get broken. Some of these things, for example, the focus on tertiary, it will all just disappear in the next six months. Honorable Minister, if you can just spend some two, three minutes to speak to these issues, we'll be pleased. And then Sepra will perform for us. So you, you, you make my day when I hear Sepriwa, you know. And that is also technical and vocational education. Yeah. People, people, people just don't get it. What put Ghana on a map probably before science and math was technical and vocational training. Two things. The man who sank or wrote Yenayari Assassini is the same person who sank Crow, 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 He, 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 Crow, He, Crow. He, he had moved, he had moved from his beloved region, comfort zone in Volta region, to, st to stay with my uncles in Kumasi, in Malaysia, and saw the art of kente weaving and played and composed that song for it. He deserves even more honor than we have given anybody in, in this country, just like Kodimo and Co. Coming back to your point, it's all about priorities. I have two friends with two different, separate fathers in the same job, to one of the top places we work in this country. Everybody has passed to be there. If he did engineering, he wants to go to GMPC or Petroleum Commission, ECG or BRE, Ghana Gas, top. Two parents working there with children who are colleagues. Uh, one couldn't look after his son for secondary school because he was always drunk. He was an alcoholic. So when somebody was saving and investing in the future of children, he was sitting under the pitou of the Shiba, sampling all the different palm trees. This is from palm tree in Kibi. This is from palm tree in Kumase. He knew where every palm tree that they distill Apeteshi from came from. He was a connoisseur in Apeteshi. It's about priority. His Excellency Leonardo Dr. Kufado said something. He said, if it means spending all our oil wealth on free secondary education, he is prepared to, or else me and you, our Minister of Information Education, we will come with a very, very creative way to chop the money before he even leaves power. The same resource that was available before the Nadu Dankwa came, that we couldn't put electricity on, has been able to put the electricity on for the last few years. It's about, it's about leadership. It's about leadership and it's about prioritization. For, for some of the projects that we've done, especially I'll use the TVET sector, I spoke about even legislation that we have passed and about passing to make sure that there's sustainability. When JSS was started in this country, for those who recall, every child was talking about with a T-square and a board. It stopped after four years. Yes, because we couldn't sustain it. They brought all this equipment from Czechoslovakia into this country, and they couldn't sustain it. Our plan to sustain it, and I'll tell, talk about only TVET, because now I cannot go to the sealers of manifesto ideas. I cannot go to them. Inside one of the leg legislations that we have passed in Parliament, we have decided that we will create a university, that is a teacher training university already, but dedicated to training only teachers in the TVET sector, so that our agenda in TVET is made sustainable as far as classroom teachers are concerned. We have decided that the next 
law that we pass before we rise in pre-tertiary education uh, area. We are creating a TVET service, not a Dagan education service that about 10, 12 years ago decides that they don't even want to do technical education. I mentioned four schools, Obwasi Sektek, Ganas, uh, GSTS, Koforidia uh, Technical, and Suhum. They were famous in this country, but they were technical and education schools. Almost all the engineering students who were my friends in tech came from one of those four schools. We, 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 we killed it. We killed it. Slowly grammar education. So sustainability is coming through leadership and prioritization and legislation to back what we are doing. We have another law that is coming very soon, Ghana Research, National Research Fund where government has dedicated up to 1% of its GDP, of the total GDP, into research. And in that research fund, there's a thing of putting 10% every year to dedicated to only technical and vocational and skill training. That is sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister, you left your mobile phone. We don't, we don't, we do not in our government keep things that do not belong to us. So please, I gave your mobile phone back to you. In other jurisdictions, there will be stories about the mobile phones flying back to their countries of origin. I beg of you. So we shall now invite Seprawa. But Minister, your second question about maintenance. Me, I think that the simple answer is to keep Nana Kufado in power. Because if the cannon, cannon the destroyer comes and we destroy everything, me, I will just, I will just answer by voting for Nana Kufuado. But that's me, that's me. So, Seprawa Agro, Minister loves your music. Please treat him to one beautiful music, brewed in the port of Ghana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was sitting come away and away. I don't forget, and you may wear a year. Was one for our gentity, yes, so. My man, you're young for a book of refrenny, a book of plumper, or dear Gromo, Bama Cassa. If you see a woman, that's so awful. I couldn't hear an internet. A woman, Sabbath Jamu, or man, or my woman, Juma. Maybe I seen so a woman. Sansa Fadia, what a chair. I dear, I will be a piano. Woman, for I did you, my dear, and shall one son of me. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I don't know if it's <laughs> maybe a year young, or maybe I'm got so ignorant to your person and then your friend education. Oh, man, on Safwa, and this year comes will be a Okuta man one, nay, Bamanapo, and Okuta man. If it's a Santa Tia Papa, ma, and Chima Babla Dabby, a man and my phone so. And me, oh, mommy, and queer, money, yeah, 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 Talk 
swante amaya yo Asama kwa me pesa me kachire yenyina ya wona se Ebra ya woman ya bribia Anti ya bo aso ya kasam anya ntokwa Ade a waya no chire chire mu nie hunu eno ano no Kana wo say Kana wo say to you minister for information closing remarks and gratitude thank you honorable deputy minister minister matthew boku pempe deputy minister heads of agencies distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of the third nation building update the first you would recall hosted heads of agencies that were handling or that are handling the initiatives or the programs of the Akufuado administration that are targeted at young people. So you have the YEA, the NYEP, and a detailed account of the programs they've been running and the kind of impact that has been made, as well as the next steps. Just last week, Thursday, we were here with the Honorable Minister responsible for Trades and Industry, the Honorable Alan Kujo Chiamanting, who gave us a detailed update, 232 of the 260 one district, one factory programs on track. Over 76 of them functioning already, the rest are uh, on their way as well. Tonight, the Honorable Minister for Education has demonstrated to us that if there's a period in which you can count the single largest investment in the education subsector in a single term, it will be within the last three and a half years under the Akufuado administration. The investments in education are in various facets. There is what goes into the free senior high school program, paying for the fees and uh, teacher motivation and uniforms and all of the things that go along with it. Tonight, we didn't come here to talk about free SHS. That would take time on its own. We've spoken a lot about it. There's also what is being done for teachers, the teacher motivation uh, and other related programs aimed at making the teacher better off and ensuring that there's improved teacher supervision in the schools to deliver quality of education. Tonight, that's not what we came to speak about. Tonight, we've been speaking about investment in physical infrastructure. And you've seen the numbers. Over a thousand of them at the senior high school level. Hundreds of them at the basic education level. At the technical, vocational level as well. Scores of uh, pieces of infrastructure. And what I find interesting is the difference between the model senior high schools, what you call a proper model senior high school. And then, for example, some of our old senior high school programs including the e-blocks, 29 of which were completed by 2016, 
and another 29 going to be completed uh, by the end of this year, inshallah. Uh, as well as the investment in tertiary education generally, and specifically um, colleges of technical education. I think we can give the government of Ghana, the Akufuadu administration, the Ministry of Education under the leadership of Opoku Prempe, a big round of applause for all that is going on there. And especially the fact that the work is not going on just in one part of the country. Sometimes when you say infrastructure, there are those who believe that once you do Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, then you are finished with infrastructure. But today, as we've seen, from Borga to every other part of the country, you are seeing that infrastructure in education going on to ensure that there's a lot of equity. Honorable Minister, I think one of the model schools it appears that Ofwasia Yerebi could get one of the model schools in the near future. The way you were going about it was, I mean, it was quite clear that one will be coming to Ofwasia Yerebi, and we are very grateful <laughs> uh, to you. Colleagues, we also want to thank you for making time to be with us this evening. I want to pray our colleagues in the media. This is the data. We have said that this election, this year, we want to spend time having a conversation about facts and data, about records. We want to encourage our colleagues in the media to pick it up. Let's start a general conversation about these, and let's engage the people of Ghana into whether or not these deliver value for them. Our conversation tonight has been about investing in education, and I think we can all agree that we have been investing in the future. We'll take a closing prayer, and then we will wrap up our conversation uh, this evening. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for information. This program, the third edition of the Nation Buildings Update, have been, has been live on the following media uh, outlets, and we uh, want to register our gratitude. The GTV, Oman FM, Asasi Radio, Asempa FM, Adum TV, Wuntu Me TV, Joy News TV, GH1 Television, Metro TV, Net2 TV, MX24, EG Television, Happy FM, and Atinka TV. We are grateful for your partnership. Colleagues, we are also grateful for you, uh, to you for your participation. I shall invite my colleague and friend, the incoming member of parliament, uh, Honorable <laughs> MP Papa -pa -pa, Vincent Eko Asifwa. So we be upstanding. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of our time together, we thank you for all that we have accomplished. We pray that the matters that have been discussed here will serve as a catalyst to moving us forward. We pray and recognize you as a God of all wisdom. This we ask through Christ our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.